Well, good morning. Uh, so glad you're here this morning. This is um, kind of a different morning for us. Uh, this is our Vision Sunday, and I'm really excited about today. This is a day that we kind of plan out every single year to take some time to celebrate and, uh, and look at the great blessings uh, that God has blessed Smithfield Christian Church with as individuals, but also as a church, um, and also for us to kind of look ahead to where he's leading us next. And so today, I want to kind of give you a warning. Things are going to be a little bit out of order. I know how sometimes I was talking to somebody earlier about how us church people can get about, you know, places we sit and orders of things. It's like, oh, it's okay, guys, all right? We will make this, then we'll make it through together today, all right? But today is going to be a little bit uh, different and out of order. But before we kind of really get into stuff, I did want to share, we did have a couple prayer requests that were dropped in the basket um, on the back there. In case you don't know, we have um, a, a metal basket on the back table with some prayer request cards where you can put praises and also prayer requests. And we, we share this with the congregation, and then we also put it in the bulletin and in our weekly email so folks can be praying about that. Um, and so I'll start with a praise request. Uh, it says for, this is a praise. This is even like, this is kind of official because it's even like printed out. I don't know if they have like really bad handwriting or what, but uh, um, it says praise for first time SCC's, SCC guests, Fred and Carolyn Bowen. Um, welcome them and pray for them. Um, it says, and I'm hoping that this is something I'm supposed to read, um, but it says, FYI, if you're on a prayer budget, Fred is in much bigger need than Carolyn for an attitude adjustment. So... <laughs> There we go. Um, you never know. Uh, but a couple of prayer requests that we want to share with you and ask that, you know, you'd be praying for and lifting them up. One is De Bill and Debbie Vaccarelli. They're both homesick uh, from this past week. And also Ada Barb uh, has continued ke chemotherapy for her stage four lymphoma. Um, and this one says, a friend of Smithfield Christian Church requested prayer to help her through uh, many family and personal issues. And so we definitely want to be praying for those folks this week. And again, we'll be sending those out in our email this week. And they'll also be in our prayer, prayer list, which is on the back of your bulletin so you can see that. That. Now, I said just a moment ago that today is our Vision Sunday, and I look forward to this, this Sunday every year. This is an opportunity, again, for us to kind of look ahead and share with the congregation, share with you all, our church family, of where, where we believe and we're praying God is leading us next. But we, we do that, really. We want to frame it up with the blessings that God has given us amongst the past year. Um, and it's important for us to kind of pause in life sometimes to sort of take assessment and look back and see how God has been blessing and how God has been moving and leading. Um, and I think it's also appropriate because today I'm starting up a new series that we're calling The Giving Church. And so over the next couple weeks, this Sunday and the next three weeks, we're going to be look at, looking at what it means to be a giving church, a giving people. Because the thing is, is that being... Um, being a giving person is, happens in so many different ways, so many different aspects of our life. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to see some different ways that we can be uh, a giving church. We can be giving people. Because unfortunately, I think we could all agree that the idea of giving and being a giving person, a generous person, that's not always the thing that most people run after, right? We don't do a lot of financial planning in life about how can I give away more and keep less. A lot of times we end up kind of going in the other direction. But we see this in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. It says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image in our likeness. You see, friends, we are image bearers of God. We are meant to reflect God's image, God's characteristics. Now, sure, we don't necessarily re reflect his physical characteristics. Maybe like within your family, you have some of those things that happen. You know, Maybe you can look at your parents um, or you can look at siblings and you can kind of see some of those common physical characteristics. Or maybe it's some of those personality characteristics that's like, oh yeah, you know, you got mom so-and-so or you got dads, whatever it might be, and you can kind of see those things. But we we are meant to be image bearers and reflect the image and the character of God. And so we should reflect his generosity. We should reflect God's generosity. We as Christians, we as God's people, we should be generous people. We should be a giving church. And it should almost be to the point that we give so much and we're so generous that in some ways it even like surprises people. We should be known for our generosity because God has been generous to us. And that's what I want us to kind of really focus on this morning. Um, and really, I, I'm kind of, we've moved this message time towards the beginning of the service because I want this to kind of be the basis for us as we kind of go forward in this service, whether it's the, the songs we sing 
or later on as some different folks from our church come up and share about some of these blessings that God has been uh, bringing to this church and doing here in our, in our life. I think we need to kind of start here, though, and recognize God's blessings and God's generosity and how he's so generous to all of us. Now, it's about to be gift-giving season, right? We're about to move into that. Now, if you actually come to my house, we're in gift-giving season. We're in the Christmas season. We've got two Christmas trees up already, and I've already taken flack online from it, and I'm sure I'll get some flack from people um, later on, but like, I got one thumbs down back there. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> We got two Christmas trees up, and you know, and this afternoon we'll probably do some more Christmas decorating. We've already watched a couple uh, uh, Christmas uh, movies and things like that. You know, we love that. But this is that time of year where the the wish lists begin to be made, right? The kids are starting to make those lists. I don't know if you remember as a kid making those. One of my favorite memories was going to my grandma's farm in Harrisonburg. There wasn't much to do there at her farm, and so we'd get up the Sears catalog, my brother and I, and we'd start circling the things that we wanted from Sears. And the cool thing is, it kind of of happens still today. Amazon sends out the, the toy catalogs and Target does the same thing where you can kind of go through and you can circle those different things and you can pick out the things that you want. And I don't know if it ever happened to you, the situation where maybe growing up you had an idea, maybe even as an adult this happened, but you kind of have an idea in your mind of something you would love to get. That, that one gift that's like, oh, this would be so great if I got this. And then you get to Christmas morning and you get the box, and it's the right size, and you're like, oh boy. And you open it up, but maybe it isn't just quite what you were hoping for. Maybe it's like a, a generic or knockoff brand of that toy you were really dying for. I came across some interesting pictures of some of these different ones uh, that I want to show you this morning. This first one, this is El Supermano. Um, it's like, okay, yeah, sure. I guess, you know, technically that's right. Um, or this next one, Special Man. Um, it's not even Superman, it's Special Man. Um, or here's, here's another one, Big Fella. Um, <laughs> I think that's Godzilla, okay? You know, we can call it Big Fella, I guess, or this last one. I don't understand it. This is Amicable Herculean. Um, I, that just doesn't even make sense what that's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be a Ninja Turtle. But those toys, you know, they're just like, it's like they're almost there, but not quite. You know, they're the knockoff brand. They're the generic. And again, maybe you got one of those growing up. Maybe you were, you have memories of that one toy that like, you know, it was like just almost there, but not really quite it. Sometimes those gifts are given because maybe the thing you wanted was just a little too expensive, or maybe it's a little too difficult to find, or maybe the person getting it just didn't know any better. And they're like, oh yeah, El Supermano, you know, that's what my kid wants. and I'm gonna buy that. And so they find that knockoff or that generic brand and they just get it for you, even though the real thing would be so much better. Well, the reason I talk about these things is that I believe the temptation in life for us is to settle for fake or artificial blessings. That sometimes we feel like we have to go for these other things when really God has such true blessings in store for us if we would seek out his blessings and his generosity. There's a passage of scripture where Jesus is recorded teaching on prayer. And within this passage, within this time when he's teaching, he's trying to encourage his, his followers and his listeners to, to ask their heavenly father for the things that they need and even the things that they want. And he kind of in a exaggerated way through a parable, he makes this point. And so this is in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 9. It says, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? This morning, I want us to take a few minutes to kind of really, uh, you know, kind of break down this parable and really think through this parable and what it tells us about God's goodness and what, what it tells us about God's generosity. And again, I want this to kind of be our basis as we think through the blessings here at Smithfield Christian Church. And as we go through the service and we sing these songs and we celebrate and remember his goodness today. But there's really, there's three things that I want us to kind of grab out of this parable. And the first thing is that God wants to give to us. God wants to give to us. You know, do you really get that? Do you really, do you really believe that? I think sometimes we struggle maybe with that truth. I think we really struggle in our heart and in the inside with that truth. Like maybe we know that we should know that, or maybe we know that we should believe that or, or experience it. But what about when we really kind of go through it in life? Do we really, do we question that about God sometimes? Because the truth is, is that uh, everything we have is a gift from God. 
You know, God is kind of like, God's kind of like how I view my parents are with my kids, their grandkids, right? Um, I, I've joked many times that when I got married, when, when Beth and I got married, that I became an afterthought. Um, I, you know, boo-hoo, poor me. Uh, but I'll never forget my first birthday after we got married, my parents, we had dinner together and stuff. My parents brought a gift for Beth on my birthday. <laughs> I know, it was terrible. Well, if, if I was an afterthought when I got married, once we had kids, like I was a distant memory, right? <laughs> And that's how, that's how grand, grandparents should be, get to focus on their, on their grandkids and love them and spoil them. I came across this picture. I love this one. Grandparents be like, just one little snack before you go home. <laughs> and that, I mean, so many ways, that is my parents with my kids because they love them. You know, and friends, I bet if you were to stop and to pause in your life and in your day and take stock of your life and take stock of where you are in your life and the things in your life and the blessings of your life, you would see just how generous God is in your life. And it's all because he wants to be generous. It's all because he wants to give good gifts to us. I mean, we look at probably one of the most well-known passages of scripture, John three sixteen, and it simply says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Well, Romans 8, 32, Paul is recorded as saying, he being God, who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? You see, friends, God, God wants to be generous to us. He gives us so much all because he wants to. And in that, that parable or that illustration we read earlier that Jesus told, you, know, you can almost hear the Father wanting to give those gifts. Which kind of leads me to the second thing I want you to get from that parable is that God knows what we really need. God really does know what we really need in life. Sometimes this can be the kicker, I think, though. Sometimes this can be the difficult thing of going through and sometimes accepting the fact that we sometimes think that we know what we need or sometimes we think that we know best or we know our world, but the truth is we really don't. We don't know what's coming down the road of our life. We don't know what's coming around the corner for us. We don't know the things that perhaps God is preparing us for and putting things in our life because he knows what's coming down our life. It makes me think of a family that used to attend um, our church here at Smithville Christian Church by the last name of the Collies. Um, a family, some of you may, may remember them. Um, it was kind of an interesting connection that our family had with the Collies. Uh, their oldest daughter, this is... This is um, uh, Jessa is over on the right next to her mom, Amber, um, and then that's Caroline and Wyatt and Scott Colley. But Jessa, their oldest daughter, ended up being in kindergarten with, with Allie. And, you know, being, you know, parents and stuff, you're at different events, we found out that they actually moved into the house that we moved out of. And so we kind of struck up a little bit of a friendship and stuff, a cool connection, and invited them to come to church. And they started to come to Smithville Christian Church, and their kids got connected into the the children's ministry here. The parents kind of got connected in. They came to our life group um, each week at our house, um, really just kind of engaged in a lot of stuff. I even had the privilege of baptizing Amber uh, one Sunday morning here. But I'll never forget on Father's Day of 2020, I'll never forget I was walking upstairs at my house to kind of go finish getting ready for church that morning, and I got a text from Scott, and it simply said, pray for Amber. She's had a brain aneurysm, and the doctors don't think she's going to make it. And I was crushed in that moment, you know, and it just kind of, as you can imagine, in like the shock of like just out of nowhere this to happen, such a young mother uh, who has a family and all these things that go through your mind, you think about all this. Well, a week later, um, you know, after she had passed, a week later we were planning the funeral and talking about how we were going to have it here at the church. And I remember sitting in my office with Amber's aunt and, and we're talking through different things, you know, scriptures and songs and different stuff. And I'll never forget something that her aunt said to me that has really just resonated in my mind and stuck with me ever since. She said, you know, Joe, I, I think God knew this was going to happen in Amber's life. And God knew that they were going to need a church family to get them through this hard time. I think God looked down the road of Amber's life and saw this terrible moment that was coming for her family, and God said, they're going to need some people to support them and love them. And I think she is 100% true. You know, of course, we, we have those moments that happen, and it kind of leaves us sometimes asking the questions like, God, why would you allow this to happen? And we'll never know some of those answers until we meet God face to face. But we do know 
in, in that case. And we do know in so many other cases that truthfully, God knows what we need. And so often he puts those things into our life when we don't realize it, or he puts those things in our life when we, when we don't think that we need it, or even sometimes we don't even want it, and we don't understand why these things are coming into our lives or things are coming out, going out of our lives. But God knows what we need, and he wants to bring those gifts. That's why in Romans 8, 28, Paul says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Well, the last thing I want us to catch out of that parable from Jesus is that we need to ask. We need to be willing to ask God for those things, for those blessings, for those helps, for those things in our life that we really mean. Now, sure, I, I don't mean that we like, you know, go crazy and we think that we just have like a blank check to write and whatever we want, we can just ask God. You know, sometimes we think we do and sometimes we get ourselves into situations and we just kind of go about our life and do our own thing and we get ourselves into a bad situation and then we get mad at God, right? We get upset with God, like, God, why'd you let this happen? And, but the thing is, is so often it's more that it's our fault and we're the ones that made the poor life choices and got our into that situation. People will find themselves in those spots where they need God's help, and sometimes they want to blame God. But maybe, and I'm not saying this is always the case, but maybe sometimes if we had kind of hit the pause button a little earlier on, if we had maybe backed up a little bit in life and taken some time to, to look to God before we got to that desperate moment, before we got to that hard time, but if we had taken some time to slow, it up, to slow up and to seek God and ask Him to bring those blessings, his blessings, his wisdom into our life, then we, maybe we could have avoided some of those situations. That's why in 1 John 5, 14, it says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. That idea of confidence is a powerful and important concept. This assurance of us knowing that when we ask things that are a part of God's will, God's plan, God's understanding, his wisdom, that he hears us. And he's, it's almost like he's waiting for us, just waiting for us to ask. In fact, if we back up in Matthew 7, before the parable that Jesus told him, we see in verse 7, he says, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. You know, why would God, why would God want to hold back the good things from us? He knows what we need. He knows what we want, and he wants us to go to him. He wants us to ask him. And I think part of the reason why he wants us to ask, and he loves it when we ask, is that it's also kind of a step of humility. It's an opportunity for us to sort of uh, humble ourselves and to put our faith and our trust into God and to just say, God, listen, I believe this is what I need in my life, and I want to trust you, and I want to just put these things in there. It's kind of like when Peter asked Jesus to call him out of the boat, out onto the water. He was saying, listen, God, I want to trust you here. Jesus, I want to trust you here, and I want to follow you, and I want to step out of this boat. And we need to do the same thing. Be willing to ask when we need those things in our life. Friends, God wants to give to us, just as a loving parent or a, a grandparent might give to their kids. That's why in James 1.17, James says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. This past year, you know, we have been so blessed within our church family. We have seen new faces and new opportunities for us to not just grow here, but also for us to love our community. You know, our mission as Smithfield Christian Church is to love like Jesus. That's what we want to be all about. We want to do that both here within our church family, but we want to do that within our community and beyond too. And we have been blessed to see God bring people to come and be a part of that. We've seen uh, this year, this has been our highest average attendance at Smithfield Christian Church has ever seen of 100 people. We average 100 people or more every single week. And, and it's not about, you know, patting ourselves on the back about a number, but we recognize that each number is a person. Each number is a person who has come here with an opportunity to connect with other people and connect with God and to take their next steps of faith. 
And again, over the next uh, few minutes and stuff, we're, actually, we're gonna sing some songs in just a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna invite the praise team to go ahead and come on up and to get into place. And they're gonna lead us in a few worship songs. And I wanna encourage you that as we, as we sing these songs, that you think through maybe the blessings that God has been placing in your life. That's kind of this time of year, right? We're kind of going into the blessing time of year where we're thankful for things that God has done for us. I wanna encourage you to use these songs, use these words that you sing as a way to kind of lift your own personal thanks to him, your own, your own praise to him. And also throughout the service, um, kind of in between some of the songs we're going to do, we're going to have some folks come up and share a little bit more about some of the blessings that God has done both for us, but also through us and how he's allowed us to, to be his servants and to be his hands and feet in this community. So let's do this then. Why don't we stand together? Um, and our praise team is going to lead us in song. And I want to encourage you again, lift your voices, let God hear your thankfulness for his generosity.